Janice, you're the lead author in this study. How did you collect the data and what was the most surprising thing that you found in your research? So for this study, we collected um, atmospheric deposition in really remote locations of the United States. And then we used a model, an atmospheric model for the time period where we collected data to try to understand what the major sources of plastics were to the atmosphere. And we found that about, um, if we were to extrapolate across the entire country, that 22,000 tons of plastic fall to the United States every single year. So what's the main way that these plastics get into the air? For the Western United States, we found that roads were a really significant source. Um, so one might uh, think that cities play an important role, but cities play a role in moving plastics into the environment. It turns out it's our roads and cars driving on roads that are a really important mechanism for moving plastics high into the atmosphere. And that's not just road wear or tire wear, that includes a variety of different commodity sources that have broken down into the environment and now are a part of road dust. So I mentioned my, in my intro to you that some of these plastics that are found in the air are from plastic that was discarded decades ago. What, how long do these plastics stay in the air and how far exactly can they travel? That's right. So we found that a lot of what we're seeing in the atmosphere is legacy pollution. So we're looking at, um, Globally, um, significant sources is the marine environment, where we see a lot of uh, decades worth of waste accumulating in the marine environment and then being kicked up into the atmosphere. Um, what was your second question? Sorry. Yeah, I'm just wondering how far they can travel and how long they're staying in the air. Right. So we uh, found that it could be anywhere from a couple of hours to up to six and a half days. So it only takes a couple of days to move across continents. So we're these plastics are able to transport really long distances and really far around the globe. Wow, they're really well traveled, it seems. So who are the worst offenders uh, uh, for these sources of microplastics as far as countries? Well, it's hard to identify um, which countries might be uh, emitting more plastics. Um, in terms of what the worst offenders are, we see a lot of, about 70% of what we see are fibers. So that has to do with our textiles and the different ways that fiber waste can end up in the environment. I imagine uh, if these plastics are able to be carried in the air and travel uh, around the globe that it's not very good for our health or for our ecosystem, but what are some of the major consequences we might be seeing because of this type of pollution? Right, that's exactly right. And I think one of the scariest things is that we don't know the answer to that question yet. We're still really at the early stages of understanding what this might mean for human health and what this means for ecosystem health. Uh, there are a number of studies starting to come out in the last couple of years, and none of them look really good. Um, we do see changes to our physical environment, our soils. Um, we see the plastics can be taken up by plants. Um, we know that a lot of organisms accidentally consume microplastics in the environment. Um, we know that we ourselves are consuming about a credit card's worth of plastic every week, but we don't quite know what the consequences of this are yet. So it, it seems like we're arriving at this understanding of how polluted our environment is a little bit late, um, and, and we don't quite understand what, what that means for us. That seems really concerning, and um, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll learn soon what the consequences are. But uh, I remember in 2019 when everyone seemed to be talking about uh, one-time use plastics and cutting down on our use of those types of materials, but then the pandemic hit, and now it seems like we've gone the other direction with one-time use uh, plastics. What do we need to do to cut down on this pollution? Yeah, I definitely agree that single-use plastics are a problem. It makes up about 40% you know, of the plastics that we produce in any given year uh, used for less than, than an hour. Um, and we're certainly not going to be able to recycle our way out of this problem. And whatever the solution is, it's going to have to be a global collaboration because this is really a global problem. All right, it certainly is. Janice Brani, thank you so much.